Compared to Sako, its neighbor across the river, you could say that Biddeford missed the boat on historical preservation. Much has been torn down, a lot has been altered, and until recently, few public dollars have been spent on restoration. But by no means is all lost. Peppered throughout this former mill town are numerous reminders of a vibrant history. It was a good place for fishing, lumbering, water power, and mills. For there's both the ocean and the steady flowing Sako River with falls that drop 47 feet. No wonder Biddeford was settled early on. This meeting house was put up in 1759. It didn't appear as it does now because it was remodeled in 1840. But these pews were here when the Declaration of Independence was read to the population of Biddeford. Along with churches, taverns are some of the oldest buildings in town. They served both locals and those passing through. They didn't have heat in the early meeting houses. So they, they would uh, move to the tavern where they had lots of heat and a little grog to keep warm. What really put Biddeford on the map was New England mill fever when it took hold in the 1830s. First came Sacco water power, then the Laconia and Pepperell textile mills. The stone lintels over the windows and doors came from local granite quarries. The brick was dug from local clay pits and baked here. Uh, and the machinery was made here. Almost everything was done in Biddeford. It became the busiest village in New England in very short order. Biddeford's main street teemed with people, especially when there were shift changes at the mills. There were bowling alleys, pool halls, dry goods stores, and later department stores. And many workers lived downtown, near the mills, first in boarding houses, then in tenements. A lot of people were housed in, in these long rectangular buildings, three stories high, with an apartment at each level. New England triple-deckers, they're kind of famous. Uh, you find them in all the mill towns in New England. The boarding houses have been torn down, but many of the tenements are still there. So are some of the homes in which the upper class lived. In the 19th century, this is the most important home in Biddeford. It was the home of the agent of the Pepperell Company. This room was Robert MacArthur's library, and it's one of the few rooms in the building that is still pretty much as it was in 1900. He had a, a lot of remodeling done on the building itself, and this is sort of in the Art Nouveau style or Queen Anne style. And this is one of the original mantelpiece is done in a cream colored tile with heavy dark oak woodwork all around the room. A few miles from downtown Biddeford is the seashore, which over time became a very exclusive neighborhood. Biddeford Pool started to be summer watering hole as early as the 1840s. And then some wealthy people from Cincinnati, Ohio, discovered it as a quiet and tranquil place. And uh, it uh, grew up into a quite a different summer colony than many of the other honky-tonk type of beach places that you see on the main coast. It's uh, very quiet and very reserved and uh, very wealthy. Biddeford, though, at its core, was always a working class town. To keep up with the mills, workers had to be imported. First from Ireland, then from Canada. The Francos stood out because of their unified resistance to assimilation. They, they were afraid if they lost their language, they'd lose their church. They'd lose their salvation. Biddeford Francos got their first of two Catholic parishes in 1870. 
They spent 10 years erecting St. Joseph's Church. It's a very impressive building. The, uh, it's a very lasting landmark. And the steeple is so tall that even though it sits down here in the Saco River Valley, that can be seen from the other end of town. Like other mill towns with little Canadas, Franco's and Biddeford had their own newspaper, social clubs, and schools. 75% of them were illiterate in both languages because their, their education in Canada was very badly neglected. So the uh, parochial schools that were eventually established in Biddeford were godsend to them because it gave them a, a way of educating their children and uh, keeping their language. As hard-working as it was, Biddeford was also known for its cultural arts. At one time, there were six theaters up and running. The vaudeville stage was very famous. People like Harry Houdini and all the big names appeared here. After decades of neglect, the city theater has been beautifully restored and audiences are once again enjoying live shows in Biddeford. <laughs>